The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At the time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. 
Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, 
Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So in order to make some sense out of this gospel, which doesn't sound very helpful, um, we recognize that it's toward the end of Matthew's gospel. One of the things that Jesus is doing is showing the people about the kingdom and what it's going to be like toward the end and how important it is to be fruitful. Uh, And so I want to go through here and just look at a couple of the Um, of the words so that we know what they're talking about. When the master um, gives them talents, a talent is a weight of silver. Uh, So he had five talents and he made five more. He doubled his money. Same thing with the one who had two talents, two weights of silver. Um, He doubled those too. Uh, So he entrusts them. Now the thing is he goes away for a long time. It's after a long time that he comes back. And what do we find when he comes back? Well, we find that the one who had five talents did very well. And the one who had two talents did very well. And the one who had one talent, that's the one we want to kind of think about today. How come this guy got treated so poorly and at the end, there's going to be this weeping and gnashing of teeth, which I always say could never be good. So the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. I think that's the key. I was afraid. So the one who had five talents invested, took a risk. The one who had two talents invested, took a risk. I have a feeling that risk is part and partial of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. I don't think you can give without risk. Can you take some money that you could use for something else and then just give it to God? We risk that every time we do it. Can you love others without risk? Can you serve others without risk? No, it's all a risk. And I think that especially in matters of love and care for the neighbor, the more we risk, the more, uh, the more joy you and I have in our master. See, the, the, the thing is this, and looks, let's look at talent in, in a way, uh, instead of measure of weight, let's look at it as in modern parlance. A talent is, is a gift that you might have, being able to sing, for example, or being able to be a good writer, those are talents. Um, what do we do with our talents? I mean, do, do we offer them in God's service or do we, do we kind of hide them? Are we afraid? If we give it away, suddenly we won't have anything left. I really think the trick to abundance is really releasing. We can have such a grip, a tight grip on things that it only become, we only become free when we let it go. Then we are truly free. Richard Rohr, Catholic priest, reminds us that the greatest enemy of faith is not doubt. The greatest enemy of faith is fear. But if you really want to be happy, I think joyful, if you want to be peaceful, I really think that the most important thing 
is to not be afraid. I think the most important thing is to recognize that fear keeps us from doing what God wants us to do. I mean, just think for a moment about explorers. Um, you know, da Gama, um, Columbus, Americas. You know, of course, during that time, um, the perception is when you stand at the ocean and you look out, there's an edge. That's the perception. And of course, they, many of them were quite fearful that once you got to the end, you were going to fall off the side. Uh, nobody knew what was beyond that. But imagine we wouldn't be here today if that fear persisted. So what they did was they worked through that fear. And maybe that's what this gospel lesson is calling us to do, to be a little riskier, to work through whatever fears we have of serving the Lord. Um, the problem with this, of course, is if you're a Lutheran, is that this is, you're going to do well as long as you do well. And God will like you if you do well. And if you don't do well, you're going to get thrown out into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, we know that that's not the whole gospel. This particular passage is very similar to the one that we read last week where, um, where you have to be ready for the end because you don't know when the bridegroom is coming back. You don't want to be surprised because you'd be left out. The door is shut and you can't get in. Well, that's not it. Uh, we, we're not, we are not worried about um, God not loving us if we're not having a good day. God loves us no matter what. God's love and salvation to you is a gift that God gives you regardless of how well you're doing. But let's not let fear keep us from serving. The biggest problem is that fear keeps us from doing those things that God wants us to do. So maybe also what this is asking us to do is to wake up. Use your gifts. This is a challenge for our times, especially during this pandemic when fear is at the fore. Why are most of us huddled in our houses? Because of fear of this virus. And I think that's a wise thing to do. That's a healthy fear, by the way. That's a respect for something that's pretty powerful. Um, I've been on the phone today with several people who, uh, are, who are not coming to church and who don't go out in the crowds because if they get this sickness, it could be, go very bad for them. So maybe what we want to do is be wise, of course, but also in our gifts of service to not be fearful, to be free in letting them go. So we are challenged during this pandemic time but maybe now the challenge for us is to continue in faith, not fear. You know, fear, as Richard Rohr says, is that enemy of faith. And if we allow our talents, so let's let God take our talents and let's let God use our gifts because in God's hands, they can be great. In God's hands, God can do with our meager gifts magnificently more than we can even imagine. But the trick is, you've got, you've got to use, use it. Don't, don't allow fear to keep you from following what God is calling you to do. God has handed over gifts to each one of us. Let's pray together during this pandemic time that God uses our gifts, that we can somehow do something with what we have, where we are. We don't have to go someplace else. We don't have to be somebody else. We can just be ourselves and we can use the gifts that God has given us to serve in this time and place. Let's not let fear keep us from doing the things that God would have us do. Amen.
Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. We pray especially for those who are close to us and known to you, those who serve in the military, and those who we name out loud or silently. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspective of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for opportunities for this congregation to collaborate with our community and sharing for the needs of our neighbors, like Lutheran Social Services of Nevada. We are grateful for our companion churches in Guatemala, El Divino Salvador del Mundo and San Marcos, Pastor Jose Luis Marroquin, Pastora Karen Castillo, and the staff at Iglesia Lutherana Agustina de Guatemala. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup, is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Mm. 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank you.